It's Wednesday. Time to take a look at your Crime Stoppers report with Judy Fricks. This is Judy Fricks with your weekly Crime Stoppers report. Crime Stoppers is asking your help to solve the following crimes. If you know something, say something. On St. John, sometime during the night of December 26th, a locked residence was broken into. It was at number 5G Estate Pastore. The burglar broke into a screen door and then opened a latch on one of the doors. $80 in cash and a ladies to sew watch that was silver was stolen. It was worth about $400. Remember, the minimum cash reward for the arrest of a burglar is $714. And on St. Croix, on Tuesday, December 28th, around midnight, the VIPD showed up to a scene right here at the intersection of Prince and Watergut Street, and they found the body of 23-year-old Christian Harley. He had been shot. He later died from his injuries. And on St. Thomas on January 6th, around 2 a.m., the lifeless body of Shakir Richardson was found near the Joseph Gomez Elementary School. Please help police find these killers and put them where they belong, behind bars. If you know something about these crimes, call Crime Stoppers. The minimum cash reward for the arrest of a homicide suspect is $1,500. Remember, you can call 1-800-222-TIPS or you can log on to our website at www.crimestoppersusvi.org to submit information about these or any other crimes. Your tips are always anonymous and you will be paid a cash reward if your information leads to an arrest or the recovery of stolen property, drugs, or illegal weapons. Our stateside operators are multilingual. Our technology makes it virtually impossible to trace your tip back to you. To learn more about how it works, log on to our website again at crimestoppersusvi.org. Also, remember, you can now find us on Facebook. Do a search for Crime Stoppers USVI. This has been your weekly Crime Stoppers report. And we want to thank Judy Fricks for her Crime Stoppers report. And before we go to this break, we want to remind everyone, if you haven't seen any stories from Lee Carl on St. Thomas recently, and the reason for that being, last week he suffered from an embolism in his left leg. And we've reported on this earlier in the week. We now understand that Lee Carl is going to have to have that leg amputated. He'll then go through some rehabilitation in New York City where he will be with the comfort of his daughter and family members as well. And all our wishes want to go out to Lee Carl tonight and have a smooth recovery. We want to see him back here working at News Channel 8 as soon as possible. When we come back from this break, we'll take a look at your Caribbean report. Stay with us. And let's take a look at your Caribbean report for tonight. A judge has ordered the personal physician of Michael Jackson to stand trial over the death of the pop star. Grenadian-born Dr. Conrad Murray has been accused of involuntary manslaughter and has pled not guilty. The preliminary hearings lasted six days and heard from more than 20 witnesses. On the final day, the doctor testified that Dr. Murray had acted outside the general standard of medical care. The court heard that he had repeatedly given the pop star a strong anesthetic known as propofol to the pop star to help him sleep. Judge Michael Pastor said that the case should go before the jury, and in the meantime, he has said Dr. Murray could not practice medicine in California. And the government of St. Kitts and Nevis has sent a strong warning to businesses who are not paying the new value-added tax, VAT. The 17.5% tax is the cornerstone of the government's efforts to increase revenue and to cut a large deficit. Tax filings by businesses began in mid-December, but not all have complied with the VAT regulations, according to the Information Minister of the State, Nigel Carty. And finally, on the eve of the anniversary of Haiti's massive earthquake, two days of ceremonies have been launched to remember the more than 300,000 people who perished. President René Preval laid a wreath at the mass grave on Tuesday, saying his country would never forget the victims. The ceremonies will culminate on Wednesday with a minute of silence at 4.53 p.m. local time, exactly one year after the quake struck. After that moment, it is perceived that the mourners will cry, I'm still here, in their native patois, which has become the phrase in Haiti for the victims who survived.